good evening. I'm really delighted to be here on this, I'll call it groundbreaking event, because some time back I was introduced to executive grooming, but I don't recall any organization in Ghana that I know of. There may be, I don't know everybody, but I think it's something that we need for many reasons. I want to congratulate Pearl for moving it from a dream to reality. And today we are here to celebrate you. She deserves a round of applause. Okay. I'm going to tackle this just in 10 minutes. Some time back, I read a Sprite advert which said, image is everything. And it got me thinking, really, image? So we ask, what, what then is image if image is everything? And I realized that there are, from a corporate perspective, if we want to select after you've responded to the adverts and you've presented the CV. I don't know whether it's chat GPT that wrote your CV, but these days the CVs we see are excellently written. So you get to know the person behind the CV and your head keeps bobbing. Look, you know, you're just trying to align all that has been said with the personality you are seeing before you. And what are the broad areas that for me, as a recruiter, I'll be looking at? Because I also do executive search, looking at top management. Um, I've served on boards, hiring chief executives and MDs. First, I look at the general impression. What is the general impression of the person in front of me? Now, what are the key things that I look for under general impression? I look at your personality. How do I gauge your personality? By the way you hold yourself. You know, when you walk in with humility, I'll know. When you walk in with arrogance, I'll know. The way you address, the way you speak, the way you even sit, I would know. Of course, the way you answer your questions will tell it all. The second thing I look at is your appearance and hygiene. You know, these are very critical things. Um, one would expect that you would know that there is a kind of dressing for formal events. You don't come to an interview for an executive search in a T-shirt. Because in most times, one of your functions is to represent the organization. We don't expect you you know, to come into an interview in a t-shirt. You know, even if it's a decent casual, we can, we can appreciate that. And um, the third thing I look at is your presence. Now, under presence, I'm also looking at your reputation. There's a saying that your reputation precedes you. You know, if you've been notorious out there, the minute you walk in, we would know. And sometimes people fail to realize that the interview panel are also social media savvy. You know, when I have some doubts, I want to check your background, see what you post. Once I know your name, I know where to look. <laughs> you know, so we live in a world where the image is everything, has many nuances. And I think it's one of the things, if you look at the what we do under the Elevated Professional Consult, they try to help in all those dimensions, especially interview and job readiness workshops. Then emotional intelligence. You know, are you socially aware? Do you have those, those social graces? Um, the CV, like I said, is chat GPT, so I take it with a pinch of salt. But it's that 45 minute interaction that I try to get as much as I can from you. So one of the building blocks is the general impression. I've not even asked you a question, but I have gleaned something from you. Then the next block I'll be looking at is whether you have etiquette 
and some social graces. You know, you walk in and sit down. You wait to be asked to sit. You know, those are little things that if you've read Ketsi for Boys and Girls, you should know. <laughs> I don't think they publish that book these days. You know, but we expect that you should have those things as a given, especially if you're moving up the corporate ladder. You know, we expect some decorum. I think uh, Pearl used the word decorum. What is acceptable behavior in the circumstances? We expect that. Again, under your etiquette and social skills, we want to know whether you understand some of the cultural nuances. You know, you don't come there to argue, you know, with your panelists. You're there to state your point and state it clearly. And sometimes you can be tricked to see whether you are humble enough to accept that you don't know it all. You know, we ask you a question. We don't expect that you know. And most people, instead of them to be very honest, they say, guys, no, I don't know. They try to give a convoluted answer. <laughs> By the time you're done, you know that you have actually disqualified yourself. An honest, I don't know, is fine. In fact, that's the answer we're expecting, actually. Because we don't expect you to know. But if you know, you're a genius. Because then it means that you're ahead of the pack. So that one is very key. Now, when it comes to communication, these days, most interviews, we ask you to do one or two presentations. And please, there's nothing wrong with learning to do good presentations. Because it's very important. Because that is where we give you a case study. We give you some time. We say, OK, come back and tell us how you resolve the issues raised in the case study. And then you come and use font size 11 and 6 and some interesting colors. We can't read. You can't read. You know, you are, you are showing yourself the exit. So it's never too late to learn. These things are becoming increasingly important. When I was much younger, there was nothing like PowerPoint. Go to the interview, you just wrap the guys and walk out the door, and you are gone. <laughs> but this, this is a different ball game. So your communications and public speaking and um, once you do communication under that, um, you know, the workplace, civility, conflict resolution, you can't resolve conflicts without understanding communication, how to communicate well. Sometimes it's the words you use. And it's said that meanings are not in people. Uh, sorry, they're not in words, but rather in people. So if you don't understand the question, ask. There's nothing wrong. You know, but sometimes we try to guess. So good communication skills. The verbal, non-verbal are not too difficult. It's the paraverbal. You know paraverbal? Paraverbal communication is you speak the words, but the intonation behind the words. You know, there was some WhatsApp that I found very funny. He says, stop shouting. You are making me emotional. <laughs> you know? Because sometimes you're shouting. You know? And uh, maybe I say that's how you speak, but it's not acceptable. So these are things that I believe, after you've gone through the program, um, it will come to light. The final one I want to touch, uh, touch base on is the mindset. You know, in pursuing your careers, we expect that you would at least have a positive mindset. Um, sometimes you have to be a bit reflective, you know, of yourself. Don't, don't go pitching where you will not reach. You read the adverts, you know you don't have the requirements, you come and pitch, and uh, you make a poor show of it. Uh, sometimes you might not get a second chance. Because the second time you go, especially if it's a big organization, but the next time you go, you go and meet these same guys. Oh, gentlemen, you are here again. You say, yes. But the last time you, well, we'll give you a second chance. But it's always good to pitch at the right level. And pitching at the right level, you know, has to do also with your uh, communication and presentation skills. Did you understand the advert you read? You know, and sometimes it's very funny. People come in, 
Um, the advertisement, the duties and responsibilities, holds the elements of the work you are coming to do. But I don't know how you read it, but you've applied for it. So now you come and we are asking you the very things in the advert, and you are all over the place. I believe take advantage of this program because I remember something that I read about a quote by Stephen Dawkins. He's a quantum physicist. He says, the greatest obstacle to discovery is not ignorance. Guess what? It's the illusion of knowledge. The illusion of knowledge. You think you know it all, but you don't. So I think that always it's good to be curious. Let that curiosity drive you to approach elevated professional consult and say, hey, one or two areas I need you to brush me up a bit because I have an interview coming up. What are the do's and don'ts? What are the acceptable norms in the culture? And it will do you a lot of good. So, Pearl, I think you're bringing something very good down the space, and uh, we'll take advantage of it. Don't charge us too much. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.